plaintiff, Angel Bradley, had a son with the defendant. And when he was a teenager, he was bullied by his peers. Angel claims the day after over 30 kids came to her home to torment her son, he hung himself in the basement. And Angel suing his father for funeral expenses and the cost of braces. Defendant Eric Scott admits that his son was bullied by his classmates, but Eric does not believe that that is the sole reason he took his own life. Start with you. Well, um, in August 20th, 1994, Eric and I conceived Devin, James Scott, and uh, we were not a couple, so we weren't together. Devin went to visit his dad, so they had a relationship for 10 years. And um, the last eight years of Devin's life, they had no communication whatsoever. So um, unfortunately, Devin, he went to school. It was the second day of school. And when he went to school that day, him and another student had gotten some type of confrontation. They bumped each other. And so um, after school, they were supposed to fight, I guess. And Devin went home and um, his sister was there. I have six kids, three adopted and three biological. And um, his adopted sister was there. And um, they went into the house and they were, they were waiting in the house. And then somebody came to the door and knocked on the door and said, what are you doing here? And he said, what do you mean? And he said, everybody's at the park waiting for you. And he said, I'm not going to the park. And, and he said that there was about anywhere from 30 to 50 kids out in front of our house. So he said his heart was pounding so hard that it was, he could see it out of his chest. So then he, he tried to call the police and they didn't answer. So then he decided to call the school counselor, which he did. So then he, he talked to the school counselor for seven minutes and the guy talked to him and said, you should call the resource officer or you should do this. And Devin said, I did all of that. So nobody helped him. So he was trying to text his aunt. So then she texted me and said, you know, did you know something was going on at your house? And I said, no, I, I, I don't know anything's going on at my house. And she said, well, Devin's been texting me and there's a bunch of people at your house. So I, um, I get to the house and he's, you know, distraught and he's saying, yeah, these kids were here and they were, you know, doing all this stuff. And so he told me that he was so scared and people kept Facebook posting, I mean, all kinds of horrible things. And even when they were at the door, they were pounding on the door saying, come out, blankety blank. And I mean, they just put him through so much. So he went to bed that night and I did too. And I went to work and he was, he called me at like 3.15 and we were talking on the phone and he just didn't seem like himself. Something seemed wrong and I wanted to go home, but I couldn't. And so he, he went to the basement and he hung himself. <laughs> Judge Mathis will be right back. He did contact me via text. Um, <laughs> and a couple of ultimatums that he asked is that I want you to make amends with your sister. The 17 year old, it was extremely important to him for you and your sister to come together. Yes, sir. And you did. Yes, sir. So that's the good news we have today. And later. She has been on your show before. She was being sued for the bill that gotcha. she owed. All right. Did she repay it? Do you know? Um, no, she didn't. Yes, it even was. After, oh, that's even right after I here. ordered it? Right. Yes, it was. Lock you up. Yes, you didn't do what I told you the <laughs> yes, first <it> time? <laughs> Is someone suing you and you want to have the case heard on Judge Mathis? If so, call 1-888-VERDICT or visit us online at www.judgemathistv.com. He called me at like 3.15 and we were talking on the phone and he just didn't seem like himself. Something seemed wrong and I wanted to go home, but I couldn't. And so he, he went to the basement and he hung himself. Plaintiff Angel Bradley had a son with the defendant, but she claims he took his own life after being bullied and tormented by his schoolmates. Go ahead. 
his aunt had come over to the house. And so she called me at work and said, he's not here. What do you want me to do? And I said, I don't know. He should be there. So she searched the house. And she found him hanging in the basement. So they cut him down and they tried to give him CPR. But it didn't work. So I came home and they didn't let us see him. And so we were all standing outside and they took him away. And then. So, so, that we so. had his funeral and so many people from the community helped because of the bullying situation and he didn't leave a note but and you know suicide's complicated um i think that it was multiple reasons not just one i never claimed that it was more than you know i, I don't know what caused Devin to do this did he suffer from depression he wasn't though like he he had a job he had a girlfriend. He was a DJ at Skate City. Um, he helped me with foster care kids. I, I worked in a foster care agency and, you know, he would come help me with the kids. Um, his writing and just the things that he has said and done, he's, you couldn't tell. I mean, I have a master's in social work and I know I probably should have been able to tell. No, no. Well, if you didn't see it, then perhaps that <laughs> wasn't the case. Sounds like a big, big part of it is what we're seeing throughout the country, kids bullying. <laughs> Uh, this bullying epidemic that we see sounds like he was the victim of that in a big way. So I have decided instead of putting all that energy into something negative because none of the kids were charged, the school counselor still works there. and No intimidation charges. Huh? And I have to get up every day and live with this. I have currently been laid off. I've been counseling, taking depression meds. I just haven't been able to pull myself back together. Ma'am, did you? What state's your name? Mary Higgins. I'm Angel's mother. Mm -hmm. okay. It's been very hard to see her go through this. On the same token, she has started a foundation for bullying kids, and, and it's going very well. It's not where she wants it to be right now, okay. but she's working at it. All right, so kind of uh, making sure that his life wasn't in vain. Yes, sir. I started some groups, and um, I'm just working with kids on life events and stressors and just different things that they're going through. I'm doing it all for free. And, um, you know, at one point we had Devin's candle visual, and there were so many people there, but he was like a little social worker, and I didn't even know it, but... One girl had come up to me and she had slices all in her arm and she said, now who's gonna stop me from doing this? So I know that he was helping a lot of people and I didn't even know it. And the day that he died, he supposedly walked around the whole entire lunchroom and introduced himself to everybody. And I know three weeks before he died, he did try to contact Eric and see if he could um, see his little sister. And I'm sure that caught Eric off guard because they hadn't talked in eight years. I want to allow you to have some words. Um, he did contact me via text um, <laughs> approximately two and a half weeks before um, he took his life. And um, we communicated back and forth. And yes, he did want to uh, have dinner with uh, my daughter. And um, I had asked him before that happened alone if he and I could talk, sit down, um, and have dinner together. And a couple of ultimatums that he asked is that before I do that, I want you to make amends with your sister, which um, to take the positive out of the negative, my sister and I have been as close as we were as kids. So, um, so I'm thankful for that. So how old was he, 17? Yes, sir. 17 year old. Oh. Went around the school trying to help other folks. Within the last few weeks of his life, this 17-year-old, it was extremely important to him for you and your sister to come together. Yes, sir. And you did. Yes, sir. So that's the good news we have today. That's correct. 
Um, <laughs> and toward the end of our um, texting back and forth, he said, you don't understand the life I'm living right now. It's really tough. Go ahead. Okay. I was on a birthday trip with my wife, and I conveyed that to him, and I said, you know, let's talk when, um, when I get home. Now, um, I understand bullying is an issue in this nation. Um, I get that. I feel that. Um, I sympathize. Um, I, I believe that that may have uh, played a part of the puzzle, but I do not believe that that was the reason that everything happened. Um, I'll present uh, the police report, that in the police report it does uh, describe that there was an altercation where Devin bumped into a, uh, another male in the hall, that they had both gone to school together in elementary school, so they knew each other. And um, he pretty much, in the, the police report, um, initiated the let's fight in the park after school. Um, now, I think that was wrong, but that's what happened. Let's just leave it alone, sir. Let's just leave it alone. We know that you all have suffered a loss, and ma'am, it didn't just happen because of the bullying alone. I know. And it didn't just happen because of something you overlooked. Folks who are watching today, I think this is an example of uh, redeeming value for your son's life. The folks who are watching are getting a very good education. So this will be a benefit to millions of people who are watching right now and it gives a lot of value to his life. All right? So hopefully that'll provide a little comfort to you. All right, these funeral expenses and the braces that you're suing for, the judge is gonna pay for it. All right? All right? So we're going we're gonna to dismiss this case. Can I just tell you his foundation name first? <laughs> yes, ma'am, please. Okay, it's called Devin with a four life, and that was his email address. So we used his email address, and all he talked about was life. So I'm... Okay, Devin for life. Devin for life. All right, God bless you both. Thank you. Thank you. The judge was absolutely right. And I'm glad that we could come to a forum, <clears throat> excuse me, where hopefully other people will learn from this. <laughs> he should have been there. The next time he's seen his son was in a casket. Sad. That's a low Sad. blow. That's a real low blow.